Hey, I'm Alec, and today I'm going to talk to you about bed level troubleshooting. One of the biggest hurdles for anybody getting started with FFF 3D printing is getting the first layer right. So there's the problem of getting the bed level first thing and then getting the Z offset correct as well, which is just your nozzle needs to be at the right distance from the bed. Even if it's level, if it's too far, it's not gonna stick. If it's too close, you'll smear some filament and it won't stick right and it'll peel up. It's a whole combination of problems. Now some printers do have just manual bed leveling where you have knobs in the corners that you need to adjust in order to get it level and then you start a print, see if it works. Whereas others have automatic bed leveling like the Lulzbot Mini or the Ultimaker 3. And what these do is these try to take away some of that struggle and fine tuning to get it right and just leave it up to the firmware within the printers to just automatically calculate and take care of it. But even still, sometimes those can have errors. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today. How to fix some of those errors, and then in the end we'll talk a little more specifically on how to deal with those manual bed leveling problems. So the Lulzbot TAS 6, the Lulzbot Mini, and the Lulzbot Mini 2 all use the same automatic bed leveling system. They have four washers in the corner of the bed, and that completes the circuit with a nozzle as it probes those four points. And by doing that, it does need to go to a wiper pad at the back, clean off the nozzle, and then go and touch those four points. So if the nozzle's not clean after that wiper pad, it'll reject it, go try to wipe again, and restart. And it'll keep doing this a couple times before it finally gives up and just says, I, I don't know what's wrong, it's not working. So to fix it, you can either replace the wiper pad, let it run through the process again and see if that has enough, uh, it, the new piece is enough to clean it. But if it's still not working, you can take either a spatula that you have with your 3D printer and just rub the tip of the nozzle just enough to kind of wear off any of that gunk that may have burned onto the tip of it. Or you can use a wire brush to very delicately clean the nozzle as well, being careful not to be too aggressive with it. Uh, because what can happen is you can spark between the various wires that go into the hot end, like the heater cartridge or, you know, the thermistor. There's a variety of th different things that you just want to be careful with the wire brush, because I have brushed a nozzle and seen sparks before. Uh, didn't have any long-term problems, but that's not to say it couldn't have the same effect if you use the wire brush. You just want to be careful. And then once you start the prints, you run the probe again, it should be successful. And if it's not, then you just may have to go at it and clean it just a little harder. So the Ultimaker 3 and Ultimaker S5 both use a capacitive probe to actually find the level of the bed. So what that does is it takes the nozzle and actually touches the glass bed and then detects the capacitance between the aluminum PCB and the nozzle. And so it'll see that it's increasing, increasing, and then levels off. And where it levels off is where Z0 is. Now, you can have errors where there's some gunk on the nozzle and that'll throw off and make the first layer a little too far away. Or what can happen is if the bed is already so skewed, it can just say like, I don't know what's wrong here, I'm just not gonna start the print. And so you can come over and see like, error in auto calibration, print canceled. And what I found works really well is to just tighten down all of the bed leveling screws on the bottom of the bed, loosen them about a one turn, and then do a manual bed leveling. And usually that will bring it back to the point where the bed isn't super skewed and then you're just relying on the automatic bed leveling to pick up the slack that you may leave behind. Because I can usually find that the automatic bed leveling is way more precise than me just turning a couple screws on the bottom. But turning those screws does give you a good blank canvas to work with for the bed leveling. So while the following instructions are a bit more tailored to the Raze N2 and the N2 Plus, there's still something that you can apply to other printers that use manual bed leveling with knobs or screws along the bed. So with the N2 and the N2 Plus, they are monsters. They're gigantic with 12 inch build plates. It does mean that, uh, well, since it doesn't have an automatic bed leveler, it is gonna be a little bit of work to get those level. So the N2 and the N2 Plus on the underside have 13 leveling points with three screws each. So there is one center screw that pushes, uh, that pulls the bed down and then two side screws that push it back up just to keep it with a, an equal amount of force. And so to actually level it, you'll want to loosen all uh, 26 of the side screws along all 13 points, so two each, 26. You wanna loosen all those, and then you want to home the Z axis so you can find out where is Z0 for the printer. And there is a little adjustment knob on the Z end stops. So you can get that closer to zero if it's too far or too close. And then it's just a fairly tedious process of 
loosening and tightening that center screw until the right, and then tightening down the two side screws to then bring the bed um, a little further up, then testing if with a piece of paper, is that too close, is that too far, and if it's gripping the paper too much, then you may want to back off. If it's too little, then you'll need to add more uh, force in the, in the bottom screws. Um, and it's just going to be, it's going to be a little bit of work. But when you take something like the giant castle that I printed on the N2 Plus, which was a 15 day print without a raft, without a brim, and not a single edge on it lifted, well that's because I took the time to actually sit there and make sure all 13 points were accurately leveled. So whether you're going through the trouble of calibrating a manually bed leveled printer or you're having a couple errors with your automatic bed leveling printers, I hope this video has given you some tips and techniques to help troubleshoot those problems out of your printing experience. Now, these are only a couple of different automatic bed levelers. There's still many more as described in some of our previous videos. So if there's some errors or some printers that are giving you issues with their bed leveling systems, I'd love to hear about it because I wouldn't mind making a follow-up video describing how to solve some of those issues. So if you have something like that, please leave it in a comment down below. I'm Matt from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.